a meme uh, in, <laughs> in Call of Duty, there's a funeral and it says press F to pay respects. And so, no, well, it's F on PC, X on <laughs> X console. X would be We're good? Okay. Hey, guys, uh, thanks for all the Fs in the chat for having no audio at the beginning. But I will say we did start on time right at 4.30. So at least we've got one of the two things correct. And, you know, we're, this is all still new to us. But, hey, welcome to another live stream. Today we're going to be talking about body armor. We're going to try to talk about everything surrounding the plates themselves, uh, some of the different types out there, as well as plate carriers. Obviously, the thing that you wear to then have the plates, you probably don't want to just duct tape, duct tape them to your body, Bruce Willis diehard style. But uh, something that I want to touch on real fast that I think has been really cool is seeing this become more normalized for civilian use. Uh, when I started in the industry six years ago and then I got my first plate carrier, uh, I can't remember what it was. It was something pretty cheapo. That's some pretty cheapo plates as well. As soon as I started wearing them and posting them on Instagram, I saw you know tons of comments from people saying, why on earth do you own that? Why on earth do you have that? Why are you wearing it? You're a poser. You're not military. You're a civilian. Uh, but it's been really cool over the past five years to see a lot less of that, where people are starting to understand that to be a you know capable, able-bodied individual as a civilian, or also obviously as military law enforcement, this is a normal thing that you have. It complements your small arms or having a way to at least carry ammunition, a chest rate or something. That's now becoming normal for someone that owns a rifle. So it's been really cool to see that over the past five years. I think it's only becoming more normalized. Uh, coronavirus has been a tipping point, I think, for a lot of folks in seeing this as, yes, I absolutely need this. I've already got a rifle. I've already got magazines. I've already got some training. The only thing I don't have now is body armor. And something that's actually been really fun is I've had a bunch of my three gunner buddies who've messaged me right when Corona was kicking off saying, I need to buy body armor. And these are guys that shoot competition. They don't really do real gear stuff. Uh, that are now getting into it. So I think it's been really cool to see the evolution and this becoming normalized. And obviously we want to cover some questions for you guys today because some of you all are probably thinking about buying armor. You don't know what to get. There's obviously a lot of options out there. There's a lot of snake oil out there as well. Body armor happens to be one of those products that, you know, the importance of this is this is a thing that's between you and a bullet. Like the, the point of having body armor is to prevent a bullet from potentially killing you. Um, so it's way more important to analyze the plates that you put on your body than say like the holster that you wear or another type of product that doesn't matter in my opinion as much as this thing that you are wearing to actually protect yourself from a incoming round. So I have uh, David here who's our company CFO, also my older brother. Um, he's going to be talking about some of the technical specs regarding armor. He's studied a lot more than I have. I've studied a lot more of the gear mm -hmm. side as well as you know, plate carriers, what to wear, how to wear it, what's comfortable, uh, what works good with rifle stocks, how can I carry you know, magazines, what's comfortable for wearing for days on end. And then we have Steve Winninger over here who's our armor and also he assists in some uh, training stuff that we do and he is also in a lot of the content that you guys have seen uh, running and gunning at the range and some of the uh, some of the instructing stuff that he does. So we're just going to talk about some of the armor stuff. But the first question that I would say is asked the most is what is budget armor that I can buy or should I go and buy steel plates? So with that said, I would say that's probably where you want to step in, David, and talk about some, uh, of, the, some <clears throat> of the steel armor stuff. Yeah, so... Right. There's there's two main there's three main materials that are used in the making of armor products. Mm -hmm. There's steel. We don't have any samples of that here. There are ceramics, which is what we do have here, and there are synthetics, which would be things like Kevlar and Dyneema. Um, Kevlar it, on its own cannot be used to stop rifle bullets, um, but it is great for stopping pistol bullets, obviously, and it's been used widely in law enforcement for decades. Um, when you are going to go shop body armor, I think the first thing that people need to do is rather than focus in maybe on one type of product or another, mm -hmm. is to actually think in terms of threat that they're trying to mitigate. Mm -hmm. If the only threat they had to worry about were Saturday night specials, soft armor would be really all they need to worry about for the most part and would be the better choice because it gives you better coverage, um, it's lighter weight, mm -hmm. um, arguably more comfortable. Your thoughts? Um, if it's fitted properly, yeah. If it's fitted, if it's properly. fitted properly. So like with the soft armor, um, there's a couple different carriers. You can yes. wear like uh, an outer soft carrier that would carry that look yeah. like a t-shirt or your uniform shirt. And then there's the uh, under the, the mm -hmm. shirt. Um, uh, the concealable. Carrier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's really where people go wrong. They start off with a, a lack of specificity in what they're trying to accomplish. Yes. 
and they rush straight to the product buying stage and then they become incredibly confused because they can't sort out this apples and oranges and or they come into it with these really flawed theories of what they're, they're them wearing armor and a you know, and needing it is going to look like. Not understanding what the different uh, types of armor, what each is designed yeah, for. Yeah, or even like... Or scenarios. One of the arguments for, is for, for steel is like, well, if you shoot a ceramic plate, you have to replace it, right? Or you're supposed to. If you shoot steel, you don't. Because it, it lasts forever. Like, it, it, it can take hits. hundreds of hits. And like, it's like Call of Duty. And yes. then your shield cracks, finally, when you're hit 50 times. <laughs> yes, so like they, they start with this premise in which they need to be able to shot, get shot 50 times. And they're weighing product oh. A versus product B... And the problem is, unless your adversary has an aimbot that is centered on your center of mass, they're not only going to get hit in their plate. If they yeah. don't have a plan for medical or something like that, this, this infinite life plate is really not going to help them. No. And it comes with a massive trade-off in weight. And maybe they're not thinking in terms of mobility-based uh, conflict, but... I mean, the, the three rules of a gunfighter, shoot, move, communicate, right? Mm -hmm. And they're probably not thinking in terms of that moving component. And they're not thinking about what happens when they add an extra 10 pounds or 8 pounds or whatever of yeah. weight to them. So that's where I'm seeing it go wrong mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> initially. And then there's some additional data that they're just not thinking through. Um, so when we went to carry armor, you know, I already owned steel armor. Um, I already mm -hmm. owned I um, Kevlar armor. <clears throat> soft armor, and then we found, you know, we, we looked into a couple different companies, and, and ultimately we settled on HESCO, and um, they carry the, you know, we, we carry the L210 from HESCO, which is ceramic only, and then we also carry the 3810, which is a, um, it's a combination plate, it's a ceramic front with a poly back. And this is, the, this is the problem. There's a lot of these poly plates that are out there that are really lightweight, mm -hmm. and they look really, really compelling um, because it's like 2.2 pounds or something, and it's level 3. It'll stop 308. But most of those poly-only plates do not stop green tip. Yep. And this is that going back to that threat assessment thing and like what am I trying to mitigate. I don't care about stopping 308 if I can't stop green tip, yep. right? I mean, how many shootings have you heard about where the bad guy had a 308? versus an AR potentially shooting green. It's not that common anymore for it's, regular It's more common for 223 or 556 five, yeah. or handguns. <clears throat> yeah, yep. and, like, and you, you used to be able to go into Walmart and buy green tip. Mm -hmm. This is a common threat. This is a threat yep. that your armor should absolutely, absolutely be able to stop. Now, maybe if you were like on a boat and you wanted armor that was also, you know, it actually had buoyant, flotate, buoyant yep. then that might be an argument for the poly plates. Or maybe you were only doing gang stuff and it was probably only going to be handgun rounds you were up against maybe the trade-off will be worth it or something. The speed but, and the comfort yeah. of wearing soft armor all day under your shirt yeah. is a little different. But, yes. but this is something that I have seen in studying this. There's so much snake oil. And part of the reason we get so many questions, I think, is um, people have not historically, you know, civilians have not historically bought armor. And most armor companies, well, maybe not most, many armor companies won't sell to civilians, right? That's correct. Like, oh, you I have to have creds. I had bad experience recently. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, you talk about uh, mindset or yeah. uh, social conditioning, mm -hmm. with, like the movies. Anytime you'd see someone other than law enforcement wearing armor the in baddies. a movie, they were a bank robber. Or yes. They were some sort of you no know, Russian. nefarious character. Right. So, you know, so we're trying to, to normalize this, and there's this huge body of people that have no uh, personal experience with it, uh, no access to information. And when you have a body of people that are trying to get into a new product, but they don't have education on it, they are very susceptible to um, snake oil. And that, this is one of the problems with body armor. There is a huge amount of snake oil in, in the market. There's companies that are pushing this really dodgy, technical, you know, manipulation to, to make to sell their product. Or in, <clears throat> so this happens with a lot of armor companies. We recently went and met with a uh, helmet company, and they talked about there's a lot of standards where you can get right to meeting the standard, but mm -hmm. very few companies will actually try to yeah. exceed said standard. And that's right. a pretty big deal, um, at least to us in selling yeah. a product, is not just meeting you know the NIJ or meeting whatever type of right. standards, whatever it is, but the company actually exceeding said standards. Right. So a lot of these companies that are pushing, you know, a super cheapo plate, if they are saying it's rated, blah, 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 whatever, like usually it's not rated beyond that. They're rating Correct. it right to where that thing is yeah. and they're not exceeding it. And it makes great sense because, you know, as a as a company, you generally want to make your product 
cheaper. Yes. And you of course, you want to make it lighter. Of course. And so if you design right to 308 and nothing, you know M80 ball, which is the uh, NIJ standard for level three, mm -hmm. um, it's on a large plate. I think it's six rounds of M80 ball spread out, and um, so they'll design right exactly for that spec, but that does not include green tip. And that's the problem, and that's why we, we ended up carrying this plate. This is what's called a special threat plate. And, and this is where people also need to think through, you know, what am I trying to accomplish? Because yeah. this is not an NIJ certified plate. Yeah, uh, that's, that'd be the perfect example of yeah. where you're going with this is the L, L210. Yeah, um, because this plate is not rated or tested to stop 308. It yeah. actually will stop 308. Uh, this has the same ceramic core as HESCO's 3410, which is a uh, level three plus plate, but it doesn't have the same backer. And so it has too much back face deformation when it gets struck. And so it can't pass the NIJ test, um, but it will stop green tip. And um, so because it doesn't conform to NIJ's certifications, it can't pass the test. And which we see, doesn't make it a bad plate. No, it's mm -hmm. just, if you don't care about NIJ, mm -hmm. like if you live in Europe, who cares about NIJ? Um, yeah. NIJ? In Europe, they have VPAM. In Russia, they have GOST. They have their own um, certification yeah. standards for testing plates. And some of those standards are changing, correct? Is so, the, what's yes. going on with so that? So every few years, NIJ changes the testing standard. Right. And they'll revise it, and they'll say, okay, now level 2A needs to t test against this threat. Now level 3 needs to test against this threat. Yeah. But they're having problems making some some changes at the moment it sounds like they're having trouble finding um there's some new stuff well, like we've got m855a1 yeah. five mm -hmm. yes we've got brown tip which is now but it's 556 five, but it's right a different animal yeah so they've got some new so, stuff they have to deal with i know and this is where if you're not paying close attention you can get really taken advantage of because someone will come out and they'll say like this plate is rated for this it's rated for 20 rounds of 308 but, but it, it may stop green tip or something right or maybe it's or, MFI, I, or maybe one. they'll i saw this recently there was a company they advertised it was a poly only plate and it says it'll stop 62 grain 223 which sounds like green tip but it's not a green tip yep and so you have to really pay attention now the 855a1 thing is interesting because um again we're we're getting people saying hey i want a plate that can stop it 855a1 and um <clears throat> most people are never going to encounter that as yeah. i understand it it's mostly being issued to special forces units mm -hmm. so unless you are special forces like yeah. the, the the rule of thumb for armor is carry armor that will protect you against the round you carry correct right yeah yep. so if you're not carrying a1 or if you're not going up against people carrying A1, you probably don't need to worry about A1. Yep. That's that's my thought process. So so let's move along now. So we've kind of gone over. Yep. There's a lot more to armor than just going on to a website that sells the cheapest plate out there and buying it. Or right. watching a faulty review on YouTube of a guy shooting one against a lawn chair and saying, this plate stopped this many bullets. What a wonderful test. And the back face defamation would obviously kill someone. Um, I have a very hard time personally believing 95% of the body armor reviews on right. YouTube uh, because they're not testing with uh, good standards. You know, right. they're putting the plate against a lawn chair. Uh, they're not putting it against, say, like ballistic gel. And I'm not even sure exactly how a, you know, a really good armor test would work. You've probably uh, studied that it's, a little it's, bit more. It's supposed to be Roma clay. Um, yep. there, you, you, there's a standard. You can actually yeah, check you the have this, this, this clay and it yep. provides mass and so Then how far are the dudes, you know, shooting mm. the plate and are they yes. also potentially like, if I did an armor test, what I would actually do, granted, just add in some extra variables, is I would actually put it in a plate carrier that has other equipment on it and then document, you know, direct hit, you know, obviously up top where there's nothing yep. and then shoot through the mags and see what happens with that, put it against the clay and actually right. check what back face defamation is doing because there are some plates that they'll say on YouTube, this plate stopped this or right. whatever. And then they show it and I'm like, yeah, that would still probably kill me. Even yeah. though the bullet didn't come all the way through, I now have this massive bulge, which is going into my body, I might add. And uh, that's something that a lot of these reviews don't, either they don't talk about or they're not very, um, they're not very trustworthy on. So I would say be very careful of the reviews you see out there. Also be careful if they're, uh, when the guys are doing the re reviews, if they're properly giving disclaimers on they were sent the armor for free, they were paid to do the video, or they're somehow affiliated with said company, um, right. you know, like some of the companies you guys have mentioned who are obviously paying some of these YouTubers to do right. some of these reviews and they're 
giving a unbiased review when it's actually very biased, which is something that I think is a huge problem in our industry. So, we'll talk real quick. You have something? Well, on that budget, going back to the, the yep. question of budget plates. So, like, there really haven't been a lot of options for people that wanted budget rifle plates, um, except steel. Yep. And those really cheap level four plates. Because those there are these level four plates. They're about 150 bucks a piece. Yep. Thanks, um, guys. Talked about and they weigh like eight and a half or nine pounds. And a steel plate is like eight and a half pounds. But by the time you add the frag liner, and here's another side note. This really bugs me. So there's all these companies, they advertise their steel plates, and they say it's coated to to guard against spall. Yep. It's like <clears throat> spall is what happens when force is applied to a plate and fragments break off the back of the plate. Mm -hmm. So there's actually tank shells, Hessian rounds, that are designed to smoosh against the tank and then detonate and then cause the inside of the tank to break away and become like a shotgun shell to kill the crew. That's spalling. And so when a company can't get their terminology right to describe the features that their product offers, it's like I would not buy a magazine carrier from a company that says, here's a clip carrier <laughs> to put your pistol clips in. It's like... It yeah. just it it, it well, messes even, things up. Even even when we talk, if we're talking about that that coating, uh, in in the regards line to like steel yes. plate, the line X, it's yes. not, you know, the fragmentation of like the round coming apart in the jacket yeah. and then parts of the plate yeah. of the metal, that stuff, uh, it doesn't really trap any of that. Yeah. Um, some of them do. Some of them are kind of solid, impressive, right? yeah. but but you got to be careful. And that issue, I think there's some people that are like, eh, it's it not a big deal. I'll just put raw steel in. I had a guy say that. He messaged me. It was mm -hmm. on Instagram, and he said, "Honestly, I'll take some frag to my jaw and on my arms <sighs> to have a cheap plate." And I'm like, "Have you ever shot a steel target? Like when you yeah. shoot, when we go and shoot our steel targets on the range, there's a line in the dirt. Like it will cut away the dirt as the spalls, the frag, and all that good stuff is literally smashing the ground yes. in front of it. It will chew we through shot, two by well, fours. We, we, well, when did so, we do that? We shot a, we put one inside of a cardboard box and shot that. Yes. Do you remember that? So it was, it's messy. Yeah, it's, it's very, bad. it's very bad. Um, so <laughs> when I was first playing with steel plate for armor, <laughs> I took a plate, and it was not even AR500, and I took a book and I set it down next to it. Because the, the round strikes and the fragmentation, basically, if you ever see super slow-mo, the, the round strikes and just splashes. So it's almost perfectly parallel to the face of the plate. So I put a book here. It got shot. And there were fragments like an inch and a half into that book. And that was just a round of 22 LR. And if you think about it, if your arms are out like this and you take a round, you're going to have it here. You're going to have it through your legs and groin area. You're going to have it up into your neck. Yeah. And that's potentially an inch and a half or more of penetration in all these dead areas yeah. that you don't want it right and so you really you don't at, want it so when you got plates at, at the range the steel that you're shooting it's either fixed at this downward yeah. angle or if it's uh, free hanging the energy will transfer it to that angle and that's where yeah. you get that yeah. line from well you still have people that when they shoot and move right they're like they do the turtle walking right so now yeah. that you've got the angle of that plate like this where's all that energy and yeah and garbage lovely. going yes. it's right yeah. into your your groin and your legs and your stomach yeah like i have these femoral arteries mm -hmm. here that are important and so the people that think raw steel is a better alternative to taking a round through the chest, they might be right, but only by the slightest margin. Well, yeah, it's... it's you, you don't want to go there. You, gotta, you can't just look at a, a plate and say, this cost, this cost, this cost. You have to balance cost with, yeah. you know, like what you were talking about is, you know, what, in my area, what's the most, like, prevalent type, you know, threat right. or yes. round? What am I carrying? What right? scenarios are you willing to actually uh, do? Yeah, yeah exactly. What, what's do. your role in society? Are you, is this something that you have in your car with you as, you know, you're, you're a, you know, concerned citizen or whatever, responsible yeah. armed citizen, and um, you happen to be in the wrong place at the right time or yes. your law enforcement or what have you? Um, you've got to balance like your needs yeah. with yep. cost and 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 make. So something yeah. that I've seen a lot is obviously people go to steel armor because you're looking at what is it like a hundred hundred dollars for a plate something but like that that's if, that's lined or if supposedly. you get if you get a line a plate that has a line X buildup on it that is curved, um, you're probably going to be looking at over, well over a hundred dollars a plate. Yep. Um, there may be companies that sell them for less. Like oh, but this is the other problem. Um, when the military builds an armored vehicle, they do not build it at AR-500. They're building it out of a military armor plate that's tested to a much higher, manufactured to and tested to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. There are some companies that make plate armor yeah. that is not AR-500, 
but most of the companies selling this body yeah. armor out of AR-500, it is AR-500. And it does, it's not made to the same exacting standards, which is why you'll have a batch come out that lets 55 grain ball through. Yeah. And then you have another one like, oh, this I've, one worked. Yeah, one of the, and that's a big problem. The target company that we work with has told us that not all AR-500 is the same. Nope. And this is a bunch of science-y stuff that I am not familiar with. But these guys obviously are because they deal with steel every day. <clears throat> um, but batches of AR-500, like David said, are different. There's AR-550. So just because yes. a company is going, AR-500 plates right. doesn't always mean it's good AR-500 steel and yeah. maybe lame AR-500 so steel. If you went out and you found a company selling legit military plate armor that they use for vehicles and it was it was curved to better fit the body and it was coated, you're going to be looking at well north of 100 bucks. And then the issue becomes how much even, does that weigh? Even if like yes, nine pounds. And this brings up the eight, next eight issue. And a half. Even if you find plate, good yeah. steel plates that yes. are like what David said, it's it's good steel it's coated with enough layers yes. that it will actually prevent frag from being an issue. Now you're looking at weight. And this yes. is a big situational thing that they've talked about, and I love to bring this yep. up with folks. A lot of folks, when they go and buy their armor, they buy their cheap steel armor off of whatever.com, wish.com, right? And they <laughs> go to the range for two hours, and they throw, thing. you know, they have their 20 pounds of steel on them in mags. Like, they can run <laughs> that on the range for a couple hours, and they're not going to notice too much of a problem, especially if they're shooting static. The issue becomes when you have to wear that for, say, a week where you have like a Ferguson thing or an L.A. Riots thing where you're going to realize that having that steel and wearing it for, you know, 10 hours a day for a week on end starts to become quite a big issue. And I think most people who own steel armor, if they actually had to wear it for a week straight, would probably ditch it by day two. And then at that point, you don't have the benefit have of having the armor. So what I usually recommend to people is if you're on a budget, and this is the question is, is there budget armor? What can I buy? If you've only got a couple hundred dollars, don't buy armor. Instead, yeah. buy a chest rig, stay <laughs> mobile, stay lightweight, where you can carry all that gear for a week, two weeks on end, no problem. You know, you can still move fast, you can get to cover fast, and don't go buy armor that may not even work, that you may drop on day two, because it's way heavier than you thought, wearing it for a few days on end, and stay mobile. That's right. my recommendation if you've only got a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Than buying some crap armor that may not even work that you'll ditch on day two because yeah. most people aren't fit enough to wear armor for a week, two weeks on end. So you've got your 20 pounds of armor and then you've got your six pounds of mags. You probably have some water, hopefully, and some other stuff. So at the end of it, you're looking at 30 pounds for just that that you're wearing for days and days on end. So yeah. that's usually, I think, a bigger consideration people need to look right. at is obviously what scenarios are they wearing said armor in. Yep. And I think if you're looking at the situations I'm at least thinking of is something that's a week or two weeks on end. Some sort of Ferguson, LA riots thing where I actually have to wear this. I'm not putting this on for home defense. I'm not going to have time to do that. I'm not going to worry about putting on armor for home defense. If I was in a mansion where I had cameras that like tripped off and motion sensors and I knew they were like, you know, half a mile away driving up the driveway, maybe I'd have time to put on armor. But if it's just a home defense thing and he's like, 20 yards away coming in the front door and I'm waking up, I'm not going to try to put this on. I think that's an unrealistic expectation people have for putting on night vision or body armor for an actual like uh, home invasion type situation. Right. Um, especially if you're like in the bathroom and you come out and they're already in the house or something like that. Um, this is for when you have more warning and there's more stuff going on mm -hmm. where you can already have it on. And at that point, you're looking at a prolonged scenario that's days most likely at a time or weeks. Or maybe you're taking a class that's two or three days. Uh, if you go to take a five-day class, carbine class, with steel armor, again, you'll probably drop it on day two if it's an all-day class. And I've done one of those before, and that was pretty tough. I didn't actually wear a plate carrier for most of that. I had a belt. But if you were to go wear your AR-500 or whatever for a week on end, uh, you would realize it's pretty lame, and you'd probably yeah. want to swap to a chest rig. So that's some of the philosophy I have at least for, you know, how much weight and gear I'm going to put on me. If I'm actually going to wear plates for, you know, if I'm teaching for like a three or four day class or whatever, having something like these, these 3810s um, or even the L210s yeah. allow me to actually wear said armor for days on end and not have any major issues. Yeah. And I think that's something a lot of people forget is they, it works great on the flat range. You know, you're doing your two hour session, got your armor on, you're probably static because your range doesn't allow you to run and gun. So you're not moving from point A to point B as fast as you can. If you, if I take this plate and I wear this for a 50 yard sprint and I do, I do movement drills all day, I will run my drills and get from point A to point B infinitely faster with a plate like this than wearing a heavy steel. 
the cheap armor out there that you can buy. Um, and I think speed is something people need to think about as well as obviously comfort and wearing right. it for days on end. Yeah. I think a lot that gets lost in translation a lot of times with the idea that I need something cheap. I need something right. with the least amount of money. And I would recommend a chest rig over yeah. rubbish armor. Yeah, and like the, so these plates, they're about five and a half pounds each. So you can get a set of these, you know, you're, you're at about 11 pounds. Um, That's good. But yeah, if you had like 200 bucks, I would say skip armor unless maybe you go pick up like um, used Kevlar. Because that stuff, yep. the departments can only issue it as long as it's in warranty. Correct. There's about a million officers in America between local and federal law enforcement. Yep. So there's and about, so and most of that, it. yeah, so about, and there's about, you know, five year warranties average. So there's about 200,000 sets of Kevlar coming on the secondary market potentially every year. Now, someone's going to get recycled, but there's a lot of it out there. You can get a, a fairly good condition used Kevlar vest for like 200 bucks and they test well. So if you only had a really bare bones amount of money, that would actually be pretty viable. If you had like 500, something like this is starting to get viable to get into the plates and the... What's the cost on those? I think they're like 350 a set on our site. Yep. So that ends up being whatever. Yeah, by the, school, can't get, do math. by the time you do that and add in 100, 150 for a carrier, maybe 200, you know, you're... People uh, are, so people are asking yeah. about... So, yeah. obviously, so if, if, that's, okay. if they want an absolute answer, then yes. this to me would fit the bill for a... That's his budget yeah. is all going on. Right. Exactly. Right. right. So I want to... Yeah, exactly. And that's why I was so excited when I found this. Like, okay, forget NIJ. This stops all the common threats... And it even stops, it stops 762 by 39 API BZ, which is like their armor piercing incendiary. If you play round. Tarkov, you know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> it's so so now there's two questions I want to address real quick. Yes. Which is how long do these plates last? It's a big and one. what happens if I drop them? Do they because it's ceramic, does it break if I drop yeah. them? And um, so the duration thing, so this has a warranty, this is 3810, which is just shy of four pounds. Um, it has a warranty of five years. Um, the ceramics, as far as I'm aware, those like have an infinite lifespan. Yeah, if you shouldn't be like chucking your plate. No, 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 no. You should plate. treat it like a piece, like a valuable investment, um, like a, a valuable tool. But it's but not going to like hit no. an expiration date like no, it, and be done. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have this this sort of half. I'm not aware of it having like a half life. Now plates do have other issues, like if it has a poly backer, some. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, you have the, the ceramic, and then you have the backer. And there is a heat-activated adhesive, usually, that's used. So they vacuum form them together, and then they put it in an autoclave to activate the glue and glue everything together. If that glue is a cheap glue, it will break down over time, and you will have separation between your backer and your ceramic. And that, so, yes, then, then that the plate starts a, to become yes, defective. That is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Now, even if that they separated, it would still be preferable than nothing. It's not like, oh, no, it doesn't do bowl, anything no anymore. Or no, because the ceramic is still good. Now, the other question is, like, what if I drop this? Well, when they test armor, they put uh, level three and level four armor, they, they have this arm, and they put the plate on the arm, and then they drop it onto concrete. And it's like a five or, foot, five or six foot drop, I think. Maybe it's four. So they drop it twice right on its face, and then they shoot it. Um, these things aren't just going to crack the moment you bump them. Um, this one has... This one doesn't have any cushioning on the face. This one does. You know, I just realized, I don't Very think I've slight. ever seen a YouTuber test armor after dropping it. I, 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 I have. have. You seen them? Okay. Yeah, I probably watch more than you have. They also have uh, protection on the edges. Um, but the other thing is, even if it had a crack, you know, if I had a cracked plate, it wouldn't be like, oh, my plate is cracked. I can't wear it in the Boogaloo anymore. Um, there's two main kinds of plates. You have monolithic plates. And you have body armor that is a tile array. And basically, it's this array of little two inch by two inch or whatever squares of armor all put together. And then they have that glue holding it all together. And Don't they have overlap in those? Slight overlap no, in those? No, it's just they're just butted right up to each other. And I actually saw a Chinese tile array plate survive a couple rounds of 50 BMG. Now, the back face was horrific, yeah. but the rounds were not coming through. So, and even, so, in a tile array plate, the round can land on the gap between the two tiles and it does not go through. Now, wow. might it go through on a crack? Maybe. But it's not this cataclysmic event that, oh no, it's all ruined. So they don't break just like that. It's and even if they did, you look it's at a bright not... light for a second and you're not, yeah. the tube isn't dead. Yeah, you're so, not gone. so I would guess, like if I had a, you know, if I was digging around in my Connex in 20 years and I found my 3810s, I would not have any problem putting them on and going out and doing stuff. Yeah. Now if mice had chewed into it, I'd be a little concerned, but. 
Yeah, if you start to see like all these like <laughs> you're, you're you're covering has started to separate, and you're yeah. starting to see like separation on the inside. Then, right. Then yeah, yeah it's you probably well, want to. And some of the backer materials um, are susceptible, but do get damaged by excessive moisture. Mm -hmm. And so if it was like wet and you know in your flooded basement and you never took it out of your flooded basement that could damage it so um i think people worry about some of these aspects yeah. and i think some of those worries may get pushed by the armor sell sellers or government agencies that are excessively liability concerned and like oh don't crack your plates and we have to x-ray them every year and I did have a set of old plates once that yeah. I had a buddy who had access to be able to do that. So yeah. I was like, can you check these for me? Yeah. And uh, yeah, they were still good. And it yeah. was like, I think they were eight or nine years old. So, so this is something that you can't do so well, but a lot of ceramic plates, you can actually wrap them with your knuckles and they have a, a particular sound. So if you're not sure, test your plates. And if they ever change tone, that means you probably managed to crack them at some point. You can take like the edges and try to like yeah. crinkle the plate, but, and if you're hearing like oh yeah, if you hear a like, gravelly sound like, inside, yeah, crunching, then it's probably busted. Time to have and then warranty. Warranty. What's, what's, what's warranty on these, and what does that generally look like? So at least for Hesco's, I can't speak. For, we can't speak for every company out there as far as their warranty. So goes. they had they had an unfortunate incident recently with their thirty six ten, which um, I think was outside their control. Um, but they had to do a batch um, uh -huh. replacement. So they upgraded all the customers with 36 tins to 38 tins, which is like, there's a big price difference between those two plates. Yeah. Um, that was a pretty legit upgrade. Um, yeah, because you're getting a lot of weight savings. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, with the 38 and, tin, and you're picking it, up. One new round, which is the 762 by 54 l Yes. I don't remember which one. I just know that you get Drago to pick around. up a round and, 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 and you're lose saving. A pound. Yeah, you pick up a round and yeah, you lose, you lose a, pound. a pound. Yeah, that's a, that's a good sales policy. So, but they were uh, up front immediately about it. Yes. They made a public announcement about it and they yes. said, hey, this is who you contact. Yeah. Hit us up. And they, yeah. they and I, yeah, and, and I had multiple conversations with um, the president of Hesco Armor. Uh, he's not the owner, but I... I as this whole thing was unfolding, I was talking to him, and he was being transparent. And He's I, cool dude. yeah, he is. I really hurt for him because, you know, he was, you know, suffering through this thing, which was kind of a result of uh, government bureaucracy. But so I want to talk yeah. real quick about. So obviously, we've talked through some of the stuff yeah. going on with armor. We've talked about some of the considerations. If you only have a couple hundred bucks, which is a lot of folks and they're trying to get yep. something, which is I commend them for you. Want, you know, you need something, you want to get something. Maybe you don't have thousands of dollars to put into really Gucci gear, uh, but you need to get something. So there's a couple of considerations. If you get uh, L210s, which is what we recommend, um, we do get inventory here and there. I will say mm -hmm. though, right now it's a little wild. Everybody is yes. buying plates like crazy. Um, but we do get shipments from Hesco pretty regularly. Um, something we do that some armor companies don't, and this is another thing that I it, it it pains me for the community are companies that they do back orders, or they let people just check out at any time, but then the people don't get the plates for ten weeks or more. Yeah. Uh, there's an armor company recently that uh, a lot of folks started confessing their woes, and a lot of the woes were ten week waits. Um, so something that we do at T Rex is. We just leave it out of stock until it's in stock. Now that's frustrating when you go to the product page and it's not there, um, but the last thing we want to do is make you guys wait after you've bought and you have a false sense of security that you think you're going to get this thing and then weeks go on, weeks go on, weeks go on, weeks go on and then finally you might get it. Right. Um, so they're out of stock until we have them. Um, but we do get batches pretty re regularly yeah. for both of these models. Uh, there's one thing you really need to think about. If you go for L210s, uh, the only downside, well, the downside that I have for this one particular in particular is it is a hard plate with no, um, there's nothing soft behind it. So as right. soon as you throw this into a carrier, you literally have this, uh, basically this sharp, hard side of armor against your body. So one thing that I did back in the day when I would run steel is I would literally take a yoga mat and I would chop it up to the size of the plate uh, to throw into my plate carrier if my plate carrier didn't have any padding yep. so that it wasn't just a hard plate pressing against my body, but I had some cushion. The cool thing with the 3810s is they kind of have that built into the plate. Uh, so this is a true standalone. I don't need to wear anything with it. These are standalone plates. Right. You don't need soft inserts. Um, there are companies. There are uh, companies that make uh, trauma pads. Those are not. Uh, those aren't Kevlar. They're just. It's some soft padding, kind of like my yoga mat thing, where mm -hmm. you can add that behind the plate. So it's some a little of, more. Some of, some of them are. are, are yeah, Kevlar. some of them are. Some yeah. of them are. You can especially on that. especially on soft armor. They often put a trauma pad right over the the sternum mm -hmm. to give it that little extra thickness and that yep. is Kevlar. 
Um, so actually, interestingly, if you had a level 3A backer for this, it would probably be 308 rated. I mean, not rated, not tested, but it would probably actually safely stop it because there's a lot of companies out there that make there's uh, in, there's standalone plates and there's in conjunction with plates. Yeah, uh, ICW, ICW and SA. Yeah. yeah. So these are standalone. Tesco, if they made Kevlar, they could sell a combo that was their L210 and a slab of level 3A Kevlar, and they could send those to NIJ to be tested as a combination unit, and it would. Theoretically, it would almost assuredly. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an engineer there, but it would probably pass and be a three. You know, a level three place. Yes. And then Stop. those two, that would be a yes. system together. Yeah, that's a system. But if you wanted to just run one or just run the other, mm -hmm. it would give you three distinct levels of armor capability. Like I want full on 308 because I'm going into a battlefield scenario. I want low vis rifle plates. I just want Kevlar. I mean, it would let you mix and match. Um, so this is so that's pretty cool. This is an example. So this is a 4800 LV. This is one of Hesco's higher end level four slim lightweight plates. These are these are pretty expensive. It's about 1400 a plate, something like that. Uh, but because yes. it's got a hard back and it's not the most comfortable thing to yes. wear, uh, I went. I wanted to test out these new first spear uh, little backers. Vent pads. Uh, yeah. It also has a vent in the center, as you guys can see. So that helps kind of supposedly helps with some of the Does just it help? airflow. Um, I don't know. I think maybe some, but um, obviously these are a little expensive. It took a little while to get. You can make your own, uh, but that's that's a big that's a big uh, difference in my opinion. If you do go for if you have a steel plate or you have an old ceramic or you have an L two ten, go ahead and put some padding behind it. If you don't have a plate carrier that has built in padding, um, yeah. a lot of these newer slicker carriers don't. Uh, because a lot of the new plates out there kind of have built-in padding like this 3810, yes. so they don't need to put a bunch of you know uh, padding built into the carrier, and I'm glad right. they don't. Uh, but this is a big upgrade that a lot of people just, if they haven't played with it or they haven't done it, they don't realize what they're missing out on. Yeah. So go ahead and pad the inside of that plate with something, a yoga mat. Uh, if you want to get fancy, you can buy a set of these. I think it was like 80 or $90 for a set. Wow. It's not cheap, uh, but I wanted to test now, the, the vent flow a little bit. I would suspect that it would really work well because, honestly, the least comfortable I've ever been wearing my Hesco 210s was, it was last summer, I was testing them, yep. and it was in the car, and I was leaning against the plate, and after about 45 minutes, I just felt like it was this sticky sauna of no breathability. And we do both yeah. the set of the shooter's cut we don't do the square back plate with no, no no it's just yeah, so, we just stock one style and yeah that that's a question people are like yeah. multi-curve or flat i don't think i would ever want to wear a flat plate um, a straight up or flat. back yeah, yeah. no so this is single curve. curve so single curve multi-curve yeah, yeah and it's interesting so i think luke you were saying that you find the multi-curve a lot more comfortable than the single curve yeah to me i don't really notice any difference well you're bigger than i am and i'm i have more padding yeah i'm small <laughs> yes so <laughs> That's what it's called. It's called armor padding. Yeah, I'm so not multi curve. You're gonna have this curve. If you guys can see like this that, way so you've got the curve way. this way, and then you also have. Oh, we do need to talk oh, real quick. Armor placement. Yeah, no placement. That's simple. Uh, wear it up here, up yonder. Don't right. wear it down over your belly. Don't be done. Right. Um, so we'll, can we get into measuring it then, since we're talking about placement? Yeah. Well, yes. That's what. Well, I'm, what I think what's more important is people figuring out their plate size that they need. Yeah. Yeah. So that's if you what guys want to cover that. So right. it's real simple. The normal is. From here down to the bottom yeah, of the clavicle notch to your to your belly button, yeah, or like just right above it, yeah, and then nipple from to nipple, nipple to nipple to nipple. And the goal is, it's kind of interesting that you know basically you want to cover that rib cage, the the structures in your body that already have bones to protect them. You're just supplementing that armor. That yeah, you're, armor. you're covering uh, heart vital vital yeah. organs, heart lungs. Yeah, because um, like if you take around to your stomach. So I think a lot of people, when they start issues, but... buying armor, like, but that's so small. I want more because I care or, about my innards. Or, or the best is they get a plate carrier that's got tons of fabric, but they're still holding one of these little plates. And they think all the fabrics yeah. going to protect them. Well, so the, that's the, the best one. Yeah, but the thing is, they're like, this isn't enough. There's so much of me not covered. And it's like, well, no, no. You're trying to cover up that thing that if you take a round to it, you may be out of the fight in 10 seconds. And you also don't want to put on so, so much armor. You're like a knight yeah. from the you know yeah. 1100s, and then you can't move. But you could totally take a round through your gut that would be a fatal wound, but with the armor, like Later let's say you on. took one here and one here, it would give you the time to finish the fight and win, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. So if, if my family was in danger, no, I'm this armor may not give me life, but it may give me the time to win. 
and end the threat. Yeah, I count not, that a win. You're not worried about like so much yes. right here. You want it um, covering you want this. It, you want it covering this yeah. this area here. You want it also. You you don't want the plate sticking out way way you like know, right and left to where now it hinders actually bringing a weapon out or shouldering yeah. a weapon. Uh, and hinders mobility. Um, yep. Once you once you've discovered the size plate you need, so you measure here. That gives you from clavicle notch to belly button your plate height. Nipple to nipple will give you your plate width. Once you have that, then you find the carrier. Generally, if you're wearing smaller yep. medium plates, mm -hmm. you'll wear a, uh, medium, a medium, medium carrier. Yep. If you're wearing large plates, then get a large carrier. Yeah, yep. it's really that simple. And that's the thing. A lot of uh, folks try to go find their plate carrier before they get their armor. Uh, that's backwards. You figure out your plate size. And here's the thing. Yeah. My plate size is probably not going to change anytime soon. I don't think I'm going to change in size for a while, even if I went up 20 pounds or if I went to like 230 or whatever, which people think I need to be. Um, I might go up to like a medium plate then, but technically I'm a small. So these expensive plates that I have... Uh, that'll defeat some of the rounds that come to our range. That's why I have some people are wondering why on earth would you spend fourteen hundred dollars for a plate? Well, I have this plate to stop certain rounds that have been out of our range before. Right. Um, I don't shoot those rounds M855A1, but they do show up sometimes, and that's why I have exactly. some very expensive armor when I go places and when I do stuff. Um, otherwise, I actually normally run thirty eight tens in another carrier of mine. Then I have these in one of my yep. carriers. But uh, for me, I'm a size small. You know, I can wear a medium, but when I know my size, I just stick to my size. I get plate carriers that are mediums, and I'm good to go. And most people, most of the armor we sell is a size medium. Uh, I think we sell about the same smalls and larges, uh, but medium large plates are generally the most popular. And then, uh, but I like smalls because I get yeah. basically what happens with me is this is a what is this a ten by twelve? Is it technically a? Oh, is uh, a on that one should be close. It's a yes. large. So yeah, a it's large, a ten by twelve. But that's a shooter's cut, so that's yeah. ten by twelve. So like yes. I could I could wear this, but right now I can see that I'm having the plate extend past my body, uh, and I've had issues with that with certain uh, yeah. plate carriers. So I want to make sure that the plate that I choose is actually being more conformed to my body and not getting wider than I actually mm -hmm. am because I'm pretty small. Yeah. Um, and that's where size smalls for me work really well. Yeah. And they're and they're lighter, so we, we move faster. We only carry the large uh, L210, but we do carry multiple sizes of the 3810. And, yeah. you know, most most guys are going to be well suited by the 210. There are we'll the, say we, there we, are the freaks of nature that they're a little. Large we sell there, mainly the medium. Is that is that correct? Yes. And, medium and is most the people most are, Yeah, are yeah. Out medium there. is this fits most. Yeah, we have we have. Um, Mostly on the 3810, we mostly sell mediums, then we sell larges, and then lastly we sell smalls. They yeah. just don't come; they don't get ordered as much. But the, the the see the meta is actually size smalls are the fastest and the greatest and the best, even if right. you're big. The side, the, those compact sideboards are the best. Yeah. All right. Well, real quick, we have a little bit of time. Yep. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into plate carriers sure. and talk and about setups because I know you guys. That's what you guys have been wanting to hear. We wanted to talk about some of the armor stuff because that those are some of the really big questions we get. The gear itself is actually, in my opinion, pretty simple. It's yep. the plate stuff that's a little more complicated, so if we'll move some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to... Do you, we don't need these up here anymore, do we? What? These. Yeah, you get, get here. I'll take that. Throw them on the floor. I'll, I'll get no. rid of that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so let's go over. There's basically... Uh, there's a couple kinds of plate carriers out there. You've got your little slim plate carriers, like this one right here. This is a Spiritus uh, Overt. They also obviously have their Covert plate carrier. This is sort of the uh, small, slim carrier that's designed to fit plates, hold some gear, and that's pretty much it. I was talking to my buddy Garan Thumb uh, last week, and he said these carriers are great for some stuff, but they're really bad for carrying a lot of gear for a long period of time. So that's where you have plate carriers like the Cry ABS, carriers that have built-in support systems, uh, carriers that are generally a lot larger, um, and dudes are wearing those because they've got a ton of ammo, they've got two radios, and they're like JTACs or whatever, they've got explosives, they've got a bunch of extra gear, uh, but for most people, I think running a small slick carrier like one of these, like the Spiritus, is actually going to be a little bit more effective, uh, especially if you're wearing stuff on your belt, because some of those larger carriers like the ABS actually come down further and they start to get in the way of belt gear. Uh, Grant and I also talked about that. He's actually ditching a lot of stuff on his waistline and he's just focusing on stuff on his core, freeing up his hips, allowing him to move a little bit better. So there's kind of two families of plate carriers. You've got your super slick stuff. Actually, if you can hand me that MBAV right there, that green one. Um, and then you have your larger carriers that are made for supporting weight and supporting gear. I like running the slick stuff. I am currently working on building out one of those big carriers. This is a... Uh, this is a carrier that got issued in SOCOM. As you can see, it's really small, the uh, Cry MBAV. Uh, it held no ammunition. It had a radio pouch on the side, which you could also put a magazine in. 
And what a lot of guys did with this is obviously they could wear this under a shirt like this. If they were doing some low vis stuff, they could wear a chest rig on top, but all they have is a radio, maybe one mag, and that's it. Um, but having a little plate carrier like this is great for some stuff. So there are, in my opinion, kind of two families of plate carriers out there, important to understand. Um, I think for most citizens, most folks, having a slick carrier that just lets you carry, you know, some ammunition, some water, uh, your your uh, your plates, obviously. That's why you need a plate carrier, not a chest rig, if you're actually running armor. Um, and then you can run some other stuff like uh, admin rubbish. Oh, wait, I'm just I'm not allowed to have admin stuff. Um, or, and your medical, and you're good to go. That's all you really need. And then you can have your pack that has other stuff in it. So, Steve, how do you have your um, covert setup built? Uh, what were some of your experiences running armor? Because I think you also ran some of the larger carriers back when you were on a team. Yeah, so the first carrier I had... I don't remember the brand of it, but the thing was massive. Uh, it it came down all the way to my belt. The shoulder straps were, you know, very wide, much wider than what you see on stuff today. Uh, so the thing choked you. It wasn't fun to move around in. Um, I like the smaller uh, plate carriers that it basically it's holding the plate, and then um, it's going to have enough space for me to to put what I need on it. So. You know, speaking like say law enforcement, I was on a team. I didn't have like 18 magazines and uh, all the stuff everywhere. Um, I think I carried one or two mags on the plate carrier, and then the rest was like my medical kit. Uh, I had some stuff on the back that was like supplementary items for the rest of the dudes, and that was that was about it. I didn't have the thing uh, built up real crazy, so. That's what's actually kind of cool about these, say, the, the Spiritus plate carriers, or even like the, the JPCs. Um, they don't really, they, they kind of help keep you from going super overboard with what you're, what you're building out. So, so like, I'm not in law enforcement anymore, so I don't need to have certain stuff on here. Um, so the way mine's set up is generally I'll just have the, uh, uh, the three magazine shingle, um, the placard. Yep. Couple rifle mags. The other one's got a handgun mag and a flashlight, and then uh, uh, carry some some medical kit in it. And that's really about all I I put on the thing anymore. Yeah. A lot of I see a lot of folks. They think, hey, I need to put as much stuff on my plate carrier as possible. And I, again, this comes down to what scenario are you preparing for? Um, you know, obviously, when you look at pictures of a bunch of the SOCOM dudes. You know, there's a lot less wearing, you know, 16 magazines on the front, and there's a lot more three on the carrier, one in the gun. It's a real fast in and out, and you're done. Or you have supply nearby. Um, I think for a lot of uh, citizens, and also you're seeing this with law enforcement as well, they're starting to get rid of all that ammo that, you know, folks have been carrying because early GWAT days, the photos came out where it's like, whoa, dudes are carrying 16 mags, like three stack, three stack, three stack. And we saw, you know, law enforcement starting to do that because they thought it's a good idea, uh, when in reality... Getting into a situation where you're shooting that many rounds as a cop, would you say is fairly unreasonable? Carrying 16 rifle mags on your kit? It's not, <laughs> I, it's not necessarily the... Uh, so what's, what's, how's the saying go? Is it possible? Yes, but yes. what's the probability? So generally, uh, the shootings you know, that happen with, say, uh, law enforcement or uh, you know, uh, civilian-involved shootings, or like a self-defense situation, we're not doing 18 mag changes. Um, yep. You know, yeah, having a spare mag on you is a good idea. Maybe you have a magazine failure or something, the gun messes up, you know, you have a malfunction and you need to switch out to a, you know, a functioning magazine. Yep. Um, great, but, you know, having having the, the weapon, you know, some medical kit uh, and, and a light yeah. source. You're more likely to run the medical gear than speed reloading or carbine. So what I generally have on mine, granted I'm a dirty civilian, is I've got two rifle on my carrier. I may have a 30 round pistol mag, medical, flashlight, batteries, uh, depending on what I'm doing, some other stuff, headlamps and chem lights if we're doing like a bunch of night stuff, um, or like an IR strobe if I wanna get really fun and trigger people on the internet. Uh, little knife rescue tool thing up front and that's it. Oh, and then comms. But um, that's kind of, and obviously it would depend on what's going on. If I thought all of a sudden, man, I really should have six you know, mags on me, what I may do is three in the front, and then I've somehow got some on my back that I can transition over to the front if need be, uh, or I've got one on the belt, maybe I add another one to the belt. So I've got two on the belt, three on the carrier. Um, but I think a lot of folks, they just chuck a lot of stuff on their gear, and then this all comes back to that's gonna weigh you down, you're gonna have less speed. I saw someone comment speed is underrated, that's absolutely correct. 
Um, a lot of folks just, uh, either, I guess they just don't go and watch shooting videos or watch like combat footage or whatever, but like dudes move around a lot. And if you can't move around because you've got 16 mags on you or you've got a bunch of like weird stuff, multiple tomahawks and like who knows what, that could become a big issue. So when you're when you're building out a carrier, uh, especially for the majority of, I think, you know, the community we serve, um, don't just throw stuff on to fill space. Uh, you know, when you, the, the advice that we give for, you know, picking out what plate is going to best suit you, um, what stuff do you, prior, start prioritizing what it is you're going to carry if you're going to build out a plate carrier. You know, what stuff do I need? And then what stuff would be nice to have? And then what ends up being like low on the yep. totem pole of like, do I just want this because it looks cool or do I, is there a need for this piece? Like even plate? a camel back. Like I would wear a camel back on my carrier if I was doing a lot of long distance or something. But since I'm generally always around bottled water, I don't have a camel back on my carrier. Now I may put one on there if all of a sudden I'm walking around and doing things away from my supply. But while I have bottled water and stuff and my reins, I don't need the camel back. Although it could be kind of fun to camel back some rain one day. Uh, who's just dump that whole thing in here and then put this on my carrier. That could actually be kind of fun. Maybe I should do that for a video. But let's go back real quick. Let's talk chest rig. So obviously you got your little low vis, small right. mini plate carriers. I'm gonna put this out. Yeah, because I want to get the other one. In here. Okay. Um, so you have your little plate carriers, you got your larger plate carriers. Now kind of going back to what I said early on, if you're on a budget and you can't get good armor, uh, I recommend getting a chest rig so you can have your essential gear, which I would say having ammunition for your rifle is pretty essential if you're actually going to needing gear of some sort. I would say that's a pretty high priority. Having medical is probably second. Uh, having illumination is probably third. And then having pistol ammo is more like probably fourth. Uh, if I have a rifle out, I really am not gonna, I, my pistol's not a huge priority if I have a rifle, it's just how it is. So chest rigs, there's a lot of different options out there. We may uh, possibly be working on one ourselves potentially, but you know, I can either confirm or deny. Um, this is a Mayflower uh, chest rig. I didn't have a whole lot around to kind of show you guys, but this one right here basically allows me to carry a ton of stuff. Uh, this one actually has, it's got four, five, five, six inserts right here, so I can run four mags. I've got a couple gener ge uh, general purpose GP pouches on the sides, so I can have like a water bottle, my radio, and then in the front, there's some other GP stuff where I could have like my gloves, a flashlight, a multi-tool, a pistol mag, you know, a smoke grenade if I want to get super tactical and really trigger some people. <laughs> um, but basically, I would recommend someone going out and buying something like this over getting cheap plates and a super cheap crummy plate carrier that's going to fall apart or isn't very comfortable because it has a single nylon strap with a side buckle. There's a lot of people out there, plate carriers, that's a whole other thing, like what kind of quality plate carrier you look for. But it can make or break your kit if you're wearing it for a prolonged period of time or just having the effectiveness of the carrier itself. Um, I've seen a lot of the cheap ones out there that get sold in combination with like the steel armor sets that are just plain rubbish. Uh, they're not very modular. They don't hold magazines very well. Uh, the side attachment system is going to be extremely uncomfortable uh, for a long you know, period of time. Maybe it's elastic, but there's no uh, rifle inserts on the sides. Like, your plate carrier, the thing that holds the plates is another part of the equation of having something effective. And I think a lot of people just either forget that or they don't know or they think something made in Hong Kong is going to be just as good as something that's American made made by, you know, American designers and stuff like that. Plus a lot of those things in Hong Kong and China are ripoffs. But and some of the old school stuff, though, um, if you did have something slick like this to where you had your armor that in a carrier that was just basically strictly that, that it just carried the armor, then if you have, say, uh, a you know well-made chest rig that you can put on and take off easily or scale up or scale down then you have kind of a little bit of a yep. system there that that's pretty handy it is pretty cool uh, I, i've seen some people recommending a few different plate carriers from companies another thing to think about and i kind of touched on earlier the false sense of security of having nylon covering your body uh, there are some plate carriers out there that are just sewn extremely large um, the 511 carrier mm -hmm. is one that comes to mind granted they made it the way it is so it could fit every plate but that means if you wear a size small, you have a lot of excess material. In my opinion, you just don't need. Um, so just because you have a plate carrier that's really big, kind of traditional style, but you're still holding a plate that's only this big, um, you're not getting a lot of benefit out of there. In my opinion, you should get a plate carrier that's 
uh, as big as you need it, but is not any bigger. Um, so that's why I really like these little slick carriers. Uh, the Cry JPC is probably my second favorite uh, because again, this was made to be small, only fit the plate. It's got a skeletal cummerbund, so you can add your whatever's you got. You could add soft armor or side armor if you really needed, soft or hard. Um, on the back, you've got Molly, so you can add whatever stuff you need on the back. I will say that's something that's really cool about, this is a JPC 1.0. Uh, a lot of the new plate carriers obviously have zip-on panel systems. Now, here's the issue with zip-on panel systems. A lot of them are not compatible with each other, which really sucks. They all do their own proprietary uh, zipper size. There's actually a couple different sizes of zippers that they use. Um, some of them have a zipper already on them, or and then they have one on the carrier. That's what Tier Tactical does. It's really annoying that they're not cross-compatible. Um, but these back panel systems basically allow you to, depending on what you're doing, your mission, your mission set, uh, you could swap between, you know, you know, something that carries your helmet and some other stuff to, you know, something like this, something that has flashbangs, whatever it is. Um, but having a, syst a full system like this starts to get pretty expensive. Um, but basically what Cry did is they took the old school JPC, which was originally their, I want to say basically their slickest plate carrier besides their MBAB. And they started building in some functionality so that you could carry even more gear a little more easily. Uh, what I have on mine right here is I actually have some stuff that I mollied on. A uh, med pouch here in the back that I can pull the tray out like so. Uh, radio pouch, if whatever. A GP pouch for whatever. And we're set. And then in the front, three bags. And I can run a spiritus sack underneath for medical or whatever else that I want. Um, and I'm more or less good to go. I can add a bunch of stuff on the sides if I want. Generally speaking, though, I leave my right side clean uh, so that I can draw my pistol just fine. Um, and then I can put stuff on my left side because that doesn't generally get in the way of like my pistol mags or rifle mags. Uh, but I do leave my right side clean. I've seen a lot of guys take their like medical pouches and slap them on right here. And they go to draw and it's like, yeah, that was not a great idea. Um, that's why I like being able to add something here in the back, a med kit of some sort, or I can have some of that in the front. So, now. When you're setting this stuff up, don't just hurry up being in a rush to buy something. Do your research, figure out what you need, and if there's something that you decide on that may be expensive or might you, you feel might be out of your budget, uh, this I'd say more so for plates, be patient, save your money, and, and get something of quality and you don't I would say I know a lot of people they look for formulas they want to just go yo let me buy a one and all done piece of kit or I just want to copy so-and-so like what I may be doing is different than what you need to be doing I may be going somewhere like I have a reason to have level four plates to stop m85 a1 because I'm occasionally around people who have that ammo if you're not around those people, you probably don't need to pay $1,400 or $1,200 or whatever it is to buy plates that'll stop that ammo. So you can't just go and copy what other people are doing. You need to think, study all of them. See, like, what are line infantry doing? What are foreign military people doing? What are cops doing? What are other concerned civilian citizens doing? And then figure out what works for me. Where do I live? What scenarios do I want to plan for? Is it two weeks? Is it three weeks? Is it corona on steroids? Is it home defense? Because I think I can put a plate carrier on in time. It's highly unlikely. Um, what is the stuff, you know, and then do I have the capabilities to upscale or downscale my gear? You know, can I go from three mags in the front, two mags in the front, because I think that's all I'm going to need, to now I have a small bag that can have another six or eight that I can drop and I can resupply from there. Uh, those are things that you really need to think about for yourself because your situation may be very different than, you know, Steve's and I or uh, David. Um, and that's something I, I don't see a lot of people, they don't want to think for themselves. They just want to copy what other folks are doing. And sometimes that works if you find the right person to copy. But I think it's more effective for people to think for themselves and actually study it. So you have your own information, your own knowledge, and you're not just going to your, you know, your one person that you worship and you're like, oh, please tell me what to do. And it's like, yeah, I carry 16 mags. And in reality, you probably didn't need 16 mags. You're only slowing yourself down and getting fatigued way faster. And now you can't move from point A to point B. And then you are in a bit of a pickle. So let us answer a few questions before uh, we go. Real quick, I'm supposed something? to tell uh, Coffee Holic that this is not pre recorded. And I. We started don't on hack. time on purpose. We actually uh, <laughs> did it. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, we don't, and I don't hack. I don't run hacks or mods. So yeah. Um, how about running a backpack over armor? Can work really well. Uh, there it depends on the shoulder pads of your backpack. Uh, one little backpack that I've worn in the past is, and I still wear here and there, is the Tier Tactical Huron, H-U-R-O-N. Uh, that has really slim little shoulder pads. 
Um, and I can wear that directly over my Spiritus carrier. Uh, it actually fits the same like dimensions on the back of my carrier. What's really fun about that is I can all of a sudden pop the single buckle, dump the whole thing, and I'm good to go. Now with the backpacks and stuff, so if you look at the JPC, how the shoulder pad or shoulder straps kind of go out at an angle when they come up from the plate bag uh, over the shoulders as opposed to the Spiritus where it comes straight up and over. Personally, I like the straps of the Spiritus. Yep. Uh, if I'm going to be wearing some other stuff, but also too, it, it helps keep that weight more center line uh, on yep. my body than letting it kind of shift right and left. And honestly, I do prefer wearing a pack over my carrier more than having a built-in pack because I can, can I can dump the backpack and free up and have some speed and I can actually get into it. The only, the main issue with having gear on the back of your carrier is I have to walk over to Steve and go, can you get me out that peanut butter I got in the back? Or can you get out that water or whatever? Um, so that's kind of lame that you have to have a buddy help you. Otherwise, I have to shed this whole thing to get into it and then put it all back on. Um, so those are good for certain good things, for certain very things. specific, like, you know, situations. Yep. So, uh, mm -hmm. let's see, uh, Hesco 4400s, uh, those are the level fours. They're pretty heavy, but yes, they work. Um, this goes back to the whole speed thing. Uh, that's why I like the 3810s and the L210s. Um, yeah, low pro shoulder strap area, shoulder areas are key. Yeah, so that's a big thing. A lot of the like cheaper plate carriers, like older carriers, uh, some of them can be really fat up here in the Huge shoulders. Velcro massive. Pads. Now that can be good because it can support weight, but if you're not wearing 40, 50 pounds in your plate carrier with your loadout and all your breaching charges and your water and all that stuff, that's going to give you issues when you start to shoulder a rifle. So that's why like the JPC was really popular. It's got this Hypalon really slim up here. Uh, really easy to index a rifle stock without having a bunch of issues. Um, it's why we like the Spiritus. Also super slim, super awesome. Um, there's a time and a place to have big shoulder pads when you have a lot of weight. But if you don't have the weight, then you don't need the big shoulder pads. And so Unless then your you're shooting Hillary performance Clinton can be higher. In her pants suit. Right. Then you have other issues. Um, so yeah, preferred dangler. I really like the Spiritus sack pouch, uh, which I had on Some the. Also had Kevlar in them. I'm uh, not. Oh yeah. yeah. And the uh, Diamondback yeah. plate carrier they built, had built-in uh, uh, yeah. soft armor everywhere. Yeah, soft yeah. armor. Which well, is like, cool, but it's weight. Well, yeah, that's why they had. Some of them were wide because they had 3A armor here, which is not for bullets. It's for like frag. frag. So makes sense. It's just adding a lot of weight. Oh, I know people have asked about side armor. Um, Time and a place. I, I don't have side armor. Again, it comes down to what you're trying to do. Uh, obviously, if I add hard armor on there, I'm adding weight to my gear. I am actually trying to, we're gonna order, yeah, I need some, you're gonna help me with that. Uh, so I'm actually gonna order some high, uh, hard armor to go on the sides you of one of my six carriers. six by six. Yep, yes. yep, I'm gonna do that on my tan, uh, tan one. So I'm building out a basically a heavy kit where I've got a groin protector, side armor, front armor, because people on Instagram are like, oh, we're running a little obvious carrier. Uh, do a drill with a real piece of armor. So I'm actually gonna build out a, a heavy kit, which is not gonna be that heavy because I'm wearing size small plates, um, but it'll be a little more because I've got hard plates on the sides. But I think side armor is one of those things that really depends on what you're doing. Uh, I prefer speed. Um, a lot of my buddies who have been doing stuff um, more recently in some different places, they've ditched their side armor so they can stay fast. They just do front and back. Um, so they're not worrying about that. Um, that again, that comes down to what you're doing, what you really think you need. I would say don't worry about side armor. Maybe worry about it later uh, if you really think you need it. And then you have to figure out if it's going to be side armor, like a 3A, uh, then you're only defeating pistol. Or do you actually want to get a 6x6 hard plate, uh, which can then stop higher rounds and things like that. And that'll just be right here. Um, on and your then with those 6x6 six six plates you're going to have, there's going to be gap between the front plate, back plate, and those. So it's... I mean, yeah. it, it does. It's, it's not better perfect. than I guess nothing if you're worried about if that. If you actually take a round, then, um, yeah. But there's still some pretty decent gaps there. Yep. Now, uh, so there's some folks asking, like, hey, if I have some lame gear, what do I do with it? Well, you could sell it, or you could just hang on to it, save up, and buy new gear. Um, that's something obviously that I had to do because I had steel plates. Then I got Spartan steel plates, and then I went and got. Uh, I think then I went straight to Hesco's. I can't remember what I did. Yeah, I think I went straight to Hesco's from there. Um, and, uh, oh, no, I had something else. You had some poly plates. Yeah. Uh, Whose were those? Was it Defender? No, I didn't ever have those. <laughs> Reasons. Uh, no, I think I went straight to Hesco. But, um, <laughs> but I still have that armor. It's yeah. sitting around. Um, it's not necessarily something you can go and you might be able to resell it uh, potentially. I would say don't necessarily plan on it if you have some really crap gear already. Maybe you just hang on to it, or you literally use the steel target, steel armor as a steel target. 
and recoup some of your cost actually shooting it. But um, it, it's one thing to do. But it probably won't hold up as well. Most steel targets no. are three eighths or half inch, and most yes. they sell for personal wear is quarter inch. Yep. There's a, again, there's a lot of types of AR500 and AR550 and widths and stuff like that. It's not like everyone gets the same batch of steel. Like, no, there's a, a lot of A good resource there. for people if they're curious about like the steel and how steel's rated, if they hit up TA targets, they know uh, what's up. that's a good group of dudes. They oh, are, it's AT Armor. Thank you. Uh, yes. Very knowledgeable and will be up, like, they'll answer your questions. They'll talk to you about uh, how steel's rated, what's good, what's not good, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was AT Armor, which I believe AT Armor does a bunch of Hesco stuff. Uh, they do, yes. So, Rebranded uh, Hesco's. Yeah. And then I'm, so that's what I had. If talking to the guy you were referencing earlier mm -hmm. from Hesco, um, through some of, some of our conversations, the plates I was running on the team actually were in other companies, but Hesco had made yes. them uh, for yeah. that company. They, they do rebadge for other companies. Uh, this person asks, Slickster versus JPC. Um, you're looking at a price difference of about 100 bucks. Uh, the JPC, you can carry more stuff on it. There's more Molly. Uh, we used to carry the Slickster. I think the older Slickster was a little bit better. Uh, the shoulders were easier to adjust. It was a more durable material. Uh, I have a older or newer Slickster down here. I think it's... Eh. There's, they made some changes to it I wasn't a big fan of. Um, but again, the JPC is about $100 more, I want to say, $90 more, uh, especially if you go for like the 2.0, which is like $320, I think. So you're getting something a little bit different and you're paying a little bit more money. Um, I do want to show something really cool, though, um, because going back to chest rigs, which I think is a, a better option to do than getting cheap armor, I want to show you guys some history because I like, I'm starting to become a gear collector of sorts. Um, this is a uh, South African battle harness. This thing is actually kind of cool, and I'm sure I'll wear it in a video with like an FAL. Actually, I need a Galil is what I actually need. Um, R5. But this thing's cool because you throw it on, you know, you just throw it on like a vest, you know, like you're shooting IDPA, and you've got everything. You've got your canteens, you've got your smokes, you've got your grenades, you've got your mags, you've got everything, and uh, it's got some nice padding on the inside. I have built-in packs, so this is very modern if you think about it with all the people zipping things on, and... Uh, but you can't customize it. You no, can't you move can't. this pouch to here. No. So you just live with it like everyone else and slay bowed. Um, but honestly, I would take this right here. It was like 200 bucks or something online. Uh, it is from South Africa. They've got this really cool coyote material. It's just totally dope. Um, I would actually take this probably over it looks like steel olive plates drab. and a lame plate carrier. Um, and I am going to run this in some videos. Oh, I could run this as my saw rig. I could run saw. saw yeah, I mean, well, the, well, is that a two or is that a one? Or are these big enough? These are Galil, the Galil mags. Just cut the stitch down the middle. I'm sure Derek could He could do it. Yeah, I could that. run 100, 100, and then I could have a 200, a 200. You could have all of it. I think this is going to be my saw rig. And it looks like a little fisherman's vest. And we always make the small guy carry the saw. So That's, that's right. And that, so I always have to carry the saw. Um, but yeah, but stuff like this is, it's pretty cool to look back at, you know, history and see what folks have been running. And obviously these guys running around the bush with no armor, uh, but that allowed them to run fast. Um, and the, obviously the Rhodesians had something that was, was similar. And, uh, so yeah, pretty cool. I picked this up a while back. I haven't been able to use it yet, but, um, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. But yeah, chest rigs, I think are uh, better to prioritize. Um, if you have low funds, then, you know, super cheap armor that may not work and then a lame plate carrier that's going to wear out or won't let you carry stuff very effectively. Okay, let's, let's hit a couple more questions before yeah, we go. Yeah. Let's super fast. We got this here. Um, Luke is going to break his legs with a saw rig. I'll prove you wrong. Um, that's why I got a saw. Actually, my saw gunner was a little bitty guy. That, he, a little bit of people say that. He preferred having the... I'll, I'll run the saw. Uh, Luke's gone fishing. Um, yeah, that's the pattern. You're going to start three. working yep. at a gun shop wearing that. You know, they I will, the yeah. Best. <laughs> Like, I should do I'm a photo for the meme lords. Yeah. Uh, RMA fours. I'm not a, I don't know a whole lot about RMA. Um, I don't know if you know a bunch about them or you know, some. Yeah. I know they're one of the more budget options. But um, again, you can do your own research. I know you're asking us, hoping that we've already done a bunch of research on that company. We have not. You can do your own research and find out what's going on. Um, how are you mounting your sack to the rear of the LV-109? Uh, literally Velcroing it, and then I have a carabiner that can clip in uh, at the bottom the of my rig. The two little side pouches or yeah, side tabs. Yeah, there's a few ways you can do it, but I like it because it's always on my carrier, and if I need to move it to the front, I can. Um, what he's talking about is uh, I've got a sack pouch mounted here to the rear. And then it comes with these 
It comes with here. loops, and I have a uh, carabiner, which is attached to a D-ring under there that I added. Um, Can they... Audio? Good. Audio? Well, you look like we're good. What's What letter is it when it's good? Uh, uh, audio. It's, they'll just say it's back with a 30-second delay. So I'm just going to assume that it's good to go. Don't know uh, technical difficulties there, everyone. Uh, but thanks for the Fs. Appreciate it. Uh, really is nice there like a couple more questions instead of just the Fs? We'll have some here in a second. <laughs> He's laying on the oh, floor we'll smoking. <laughs> um, hey, Chesterick already answered that. All right, you, guys are, you guys are back just in time to say goodbye. Okay. Pretty much. Uh, right. Yeah, Spiritus is working on a back panel. Don't know when they're releasing it. I think they teased it at SHOT Show. Um, so if you buy a Spiritus Over, which is the carrier that we sell, which we also don't have in stock very often um, because Spiritus is overloaded with sales and trying to grow and stuff like that due to their popularity because their gear is pretty awesome. Um, you can get that over. Hopefully some, uh, back panels will show up until then you can get a small backpack to wear on top. And honestly, it's pretty effective. I really like doing that. So, well guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I uh, hope that was helpful regarding armor, plate carrier stuff, chest rig stuff. Uh, we are working on some stuff here at T-Rex to help some of you guys out who are trying to, you know, get built out with your gear. It's something that's really important to us is equipping everyone with, you know, effective stuff. Uh, that's why we sell things like aim points and EOTEX and we manufacture holsters and um, we're, we're working on some other stuff to help you guys out. And uh, obviously we sell Hescos as well uh, after doing a lot of research and trying to figure out who a reputable armor company is to sell for. Um, and we'll probably be, uh, hopefully we get shipments from them pretty often. But hopefully we can Regularly. keep them in yeah. stock usually, pretty good. Usually we get a batch of L210s every two weeks. Two weeks for batches of L210s. And every four weeks for 3810s. And every four weeks for 3810s. But, but, but they're small-ish. Well, they're not small batches. We just have pallets. a lot of people that buy. They're so, pallets. But yeah, but, they're gone um, when they arrive. There are disruptions because of coronavirus. Yes. There's shipping, manufacturing. Uh, we've had some issues with some of our uh, some of the people that we buy from, like getting stuff, massive delays. I think everyone's getting pretty used to that. And um, before we go, if you have questions about that stuff, if you email, send an email to team at trex-arms.com. They will assist. We have a great customer service department, and that is the fastest way to get answers on yep. stock items, your orders, even like all that stuff. Potentially how to set it up, or even <clears throat> questions about other companies. We yes. even answer those sometimes. Uh, sending Instagram DMs is not um, great. Uh, we don't check those as much. I don't check mine as much. Um, so that's not the best way to get direct customer service to the products that we sell or offer or stock. If you want information on that, you can actually hit up our customer service team, like uh, Steve said, at team at trex-arms.com, and you will be all hooked up.